Hey everyone, John here. Welcome back to Topo Talk. This is number 32. This time we're going to take a look at this example that was shared with me. You can see we've got these loops running through this curved surface and it's leaving these bumps here, these long distortions. And this is a really common thing. I see this all the time. People are always asking me, you know, how can I sharpen my model and not mess up my curvature? And I have addressed this in previous Topo Talks, but I thought we could uh, you know, very quickly look at how to create a shape like this um, because uh, there's a much easier way to do it and a much more effective way. So let's jump into Blender. And here in Blender, just come up to the Edit menu and choose Preferences. And I've already just turned mine on. Just make sure you search for Extra and turn on Extra Objects. Now, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, I'm working in 4.1 and I haven't used my previous theme. So I'm only turning on add-ons as I need them. And I'm trying to work as vanilla as possible. And I would classify anything that ships with Blender by default as uh, vanilla, even though it's not turned on by default. So turn on extra objects and we'll go into top mode, shift a mesh, round cube, and from the presets, choose quad sphere, just with a divisions of eight. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So we'll just come into like front orthographic, orthographic here, Alt Z, to go into X-ray mode, delete these vertices, and we will scale on the Z to zero. Now notice how it didn't place it on the X axis. So what we can do, is a couple of things. We could scale to active point. We could also scale to 3D cursor. So scale Z zero, there we go like that. All right, so now we want to deselect some stuff because we're gonna use a mirror modifier. So we wanted to delete some stuff. So let's just start by getting rid of that and that, okay and in point mode or vert mode, still saying points, even though I haven't used Cinema 4D for years. Get rid of that and that. Delete vertices. Okay. All right, so that's a good base. Let's go add modifier, generate mirror. And we want it on the Y. We don't have to bisect because we've already deleted those parts. Now we do want to make sure that we have clipping turned on because if we don't, when we extrude, we're going to create internal geometry. So we definitely don't want that. All right, I'm just going to hide those for a second. And we're just going to create a couple of cuts to straighten up this section here because that's where the inset's going to be. So K, just click from vert to vert, right mouse click just to continue that cut. And we want to be in edge mode, shift select those and dissolve. Let's turn these back on. Okay, so three for face mode, A to select all, and we'll just extrude up. And you can see we have no internal geometry inside there. All right, so I'm just gonna hide that for a sec. And we want to deselect this one and we want to extrude again. Extrude up like that. Just try to create a nice even square there. All right. So we'll put one more loop down here. When we create the bevel, we're going to use the arc outer mitre and we'll use that to hold the cut that we put in to terminate that arc mitre. That looks pretty good. All right. So edge mode, select sharp edges, selected everything that we need, that's great. Control B, just pull out a little bevel there like that. Now, I've explained in Top of Talk number three, all about a shape similar to this and how you can sharpen it in different ways. And that's quite an in-depth tutorial, so definitely check that out. I'm not gonna go into, too, into it too deeply here. Suffice to say that I'm keeping the shape at 0.5 because I found that with these fairly low poly curved surfaces, a shape of one can tend to introduce you know, artifacts and shading errors, but I find they're easier to control if the shape isn't, isn't the shape of one. Okay, 
So that looks pretty good. Um, because we have the mitre outer set to arc, as I mentioned, that gives us these end gons here. So I just grab the knife tool, and this is why we put that extra loop in first. So I can terminate those. Now, we are creating a complex pole here. If that really bothered you, you'd have to create your original quad sphere with more segments, okay, to add an extra loop in there to separate those. But uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. All right, so it's looking faceted. So what we'll do here in Blender 4.1 is we will right click and choose Shade Smooth by Angle. Okay, and let's have a look. You can see it's looking a little bit weird there on there, but I think it should be fine when we add a subdivision surface modifier. Looks pretty good, just bring it up to two. There we go. Okay, so there's a little bit of a little bit of an error there, but like I said, that's explained pretty well in Topo Torco 3, but I think that looks pretty good. It really depends on how close you're gonna get. All you're gonna have to do is if you're gonna have to come up super close to this at an angle where you do see some some um, shading errors, you've got to make it higher poly. That looks pretty good. All I would do other than this is just um let me just Turn that off. I would just roll a couple more loops in here just to even this up like that. Okay. So that is how I would approach that. Pretty simple. And just turn this back on. And that looks pretty good. How does it look with that cap on? There's a little bit softer around there, but I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so very quick way to create a shape like that. Hopefully that was useful. I'll see you in the next Topo Talk.